I did some wrong, but I'm always right. What's up, your girl G here? Welcome back to my channel. Y'all, we have Growing Up Hip Hop to get into. The new season has started. This is what Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta. And um, this season definitely is going to be a lot more interesting because we are bringing back a couple of old characters that definitely had things popping off the last time. Y'all remember Johnny Blaze? Yeah, she's going to be back. Um, we also have Drea, who kind of had like a little... Uh, little of affiliation with the um, franchise last season where her daughter looks like she's going to be back from the previews. We also have uh, Salt and Pepper I saw in there um, from the time they were sitting down at the table with Deb and they found out that she was a Trumper. Man, the look on them, the look on their faces was like, no, this bitch didn't. Like, did she really just say that she supported Trump? Not Deb. Not, not Deb. Um... Who else do we have on there this season? I think Easy E's daughter might even be back a little bit. And now, now y'all know last season she pissed Deb and um, the brat off because she felt like she was too good to go through a boot camp because she had Easy E's last name. And it's like, girl, just because your daddy was Easy E does not mean that you are above A and E and actually going through um, a boot camp. You're not. I'm sorry. Because where are you right now? Like, where's your clout? Where's your anything like come on girl like mm -mm. so yeah growing up hip-hop you guys are gonna get into it now you guys just gotta let me know if we're gonna talk about black china or not i just don't know it's like this bitch got nine lives like the whole show with rob with in the kardashians they had one season of that but they basically blocked her from doing any type of separate show on e and then we went she went to zeus and had that little special with her mom um Tokyo and then somehow she ends up back on TV like I tell you she bounced back y'all but I guess you know that's that stripper hustle in her like you know strippers they got a different type of hustle okay but y'all let me know if uh you know we should talk about it do a little tidbit or whatever you know just drop it on the comments and let me know how y'all feel about uh the Black China series but nonetheless we're gonna get into growing up hip-hop okay um, so we actually opened up the episode talking about the pandemic, obviously how everybody was reacting to that, you know, last year starting because 2020 y'all 2020 was what did that man say? He said, uh, he said 2020 was a dumpster, a dumpster fire wrapped in, wrapped in a train wreck. <laughs> like it was something. And basically like 2020 was just full of drinking. Like everybody was at home drinking trying to cope with a virus literally taking everybody's family on top of that dealing with the damn election like it was too much y'all too much and so the celebrities we see how everybody was reacting the brat talking about i would have wore two three masks if i had to so we see everybody and uh we get to bow wow obviously he didn't take the pandemic too seriously because he decided that he was gonna have wild nights in miami like his friend said like the hangover um, because he's doing his like last album apparently. Um, he's talking to Pimpin, talking about how, oh, you know, we went wild now. They went balls to the wall, had a yacht one night, had a jet the other night, Pimpin on the jet, the whole video. They was doing it all big. Firstly, Bow Wow, I mean, I know you got money. Like, where's the supplement income coming from? I'm just wondering because I don't think your shit is streaming anymore. Like the only things that could be really still be bringing him money is like Mike. Cause that shit still comes on TV lottery ticket that comes on BET. Um, what else? Like I'm trying to think, I mean, he did host a couple of shows, right? I think so. Maybe he invested well. Maybe he ain't as dumb as like we think he is. Cause he had money to sit there and do all that. But nonetheless, he did talk about how he was upset that pimping, got him a fine for his room because they told him no smoking no smoking the the weed as Stephen a likes to say no smoking the weed in the hotel well pimpin decided okay well i'm gonna go on the balcony um and smoke out there but the problem pimpin is if y'all is smoking the shit that i would assume you know people of your status would be smoking you know the loud the sticky icky the gooey the snoop dog um that smell is gonna carry and that's clearly what happened the minute he opened the door obviously that waft is gonna follow you if you smoking the right stuff as long as you ain't smoking no reggie you know that smell gonna follow you and that's exactly what happened that got a thousand dollar fine because the smoke 
and they like were like getting ready to kick them out. So he mad at pimping because he's like, dang, you just added another thousand dollars to my bill. So they get a call from Ayana. Ayana's talking about um she's feeling sick. She went to Florida as well when things open back up. And it's like, but you went to Miami. Florida literally was the breeding ground for COVID. That was like a cesspool. Like of all places to go on vacation, you go to Florida. And that's why her ass was at home sick, coughing up a lung. And she's telling Bow Wow, like, you might want to get tested because I think I got COVID. All the niggas in the room talking about like, oh, don't say that, Ayana. Don't do that. Don't don't scare me like that. And Bow Wow's like, uh, you know, we cool, right? We like, I, I wasn't around you or nothing. And she's like, just to be safe. So he like panicking because it's like, it's different when you watch other people get affected by stuff. But then when it gets close to you, like, it's a different type of like, I don't know, like, switch. So he also did get a call from Jermaine Dupri's daughter. She was basically talking about how proud she is of him. You know, he's working on his final album. You know, she's like, you know, you've been talking real about your business. I don't know. Bow Wow got like 600 different business. Hey, is he in alcohol? Does he have a do-rag? I think he has like a wave brush. Um, didn't he have like a vodka or tequila at some point? But then that shit went like down. I'm, uh, it was a, It was a lot, okay? But nonetheless, she was saying that, you know what, you've been doing good. I've been watching you, but uh, you haven't been talking about no girls. But she's like, I did see you, you know, while now in Florida. And that's just stupid because of COVID. He's like, what do you mean? She's like, you ain't been wearing no mask. You took a picture on IG next to a a, a, a big booty bitch on, on Instagram. And literally the picture comes up and it's Bow Wow's face by a girl in a thong and her ass out. So it's like, come on, Bow Wow, get it together. So... Basically, at this point, all three of them are, like, messed up. Like, they're just doing too much. So, um, after that, we end up getting a scene where Waka Flocka goes over to his mom's house. Deb literally is living in a zoo. She got 600 different lizards. A lizard on her shirt while she's cooking spaghetti. Uh, she literally brought this big-ass gila monster, iguana-looking thing, like, like, Walker said, he said, you got a dinosaur walking around the house. Did y'all see that lizard? I mean, I like iguanas. They're pretty. And I like lizards. I caught them all the time. You know, growing up in school, like I was a huge lizard, caught, you know, lizards and stuff and save them and shit. But that wasn't no lizard that Deb had walking around her house. That was a full on, like Walker said, dinosaur. Like this shit evolved and was walking around her kitchen like he paid bills. So Walker was like, nah, you can keep that shit away from me. But she's like, I love animals because they show you unconditional love, which is true. Anybody who owns a pet knows that your pet becomes your life. They're like a child. You feed them, you take them out to go to the bathroom, the same thing that you do for a child. So if they've been in your life a long time, it's just a different type of bond. You know, real pet people know, pet owners know. But the lizard, that shit gotta go. Uh, or dinosaur, whatever you want to call it, that Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Velociraptor, whatever the hell you want to call it. Now that hoe, it got to go. So they're sitting down, Walker's talking on the phone with Miss Deb and talking about, you know, Ayana, um, they, no, that's what happened. They got a call from Ayana. Ayana lets them know that she possibly got COVID. And they're like tripping because it's like, dang, Ayana, like, da 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 da. Um, she. Waka like I guess has some type of like detox or like black juice or something like seaweed and everything so they were talking about that and then the brat ends up calling Deb and ends up talking to her about how she found out that she supports Trump when when the brat said that shit y'all the look on Waka's face when he heard his mama supported Trump took me out I died because his eyes got so big and he looked at his mama like, wait a minute, you support Trump? And she's like, yeah, sure do. He like, run that back again. You like Trump? And she's like, yeah, I don't see what's wrong with it. He said, oh, hell mama, like what you gonna, you, you trying to give me a heart attack. And it's hard to really sit there and believe that Deb likes Trump after all the shit he, this was obviously all before what's going on now but it's like Deb you see how he's enticing white people to go after black folks and just like the damage that he's done to your community like 
he don't give a fuck about your sons and you support him. And her thing is, is what almost everybody, you know, was saying, oh, he's straightforward. You know what he's thinking. He's always going to say what's on his mind. There's no changing that man who he is, who he is. And that's real. You know, he's always going to say the truth. He, you know, whatever he, he going to share his real opinion. And it's like, that's bullshit. Just because somebody says what's on their mind and speaks their truth or whatever, doesn't mean it's right. All day, I might feel like I can be honest and say, I don't like your ass and I want you to die just because I'm, I'm real and like, just because I'm straightforward and saying that I don't like you doesn't change the fact that after that, I sit there and believe that you should get shot and you should die. And because just because I said, look, how about if I walk up to you and I'd be like, I don't like you. So I'm going to shoot you in two days. Oh, you real. You at least you told me up front. I'll come and shoot you in two days. And then it'd be like, but but she said it though. She was for real. At least she's at least she was straightforward. But we just gonna negate the fact that I shot somebody and it's somebody dead lying on the floor and they in a pile of blood. Okay. Alright, Deb. I get sure that's your logic. And obviously with how Deb is, I'm not it's not too far fetched. Deb like is a person. Say what you mean, mean what you say, really black and white, straightforward, like I can see the connection there. But the brat was like, I just can't do that. And so Walker's sitting there like, how the hell am I going to tell Tammy? Because this shit is wild. Um, Come on, Deb. Like, that 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 just hurt my heart. It really did. So the brat, she was asking the brat if she was going to come her little lunch in talking about politics. And the brat said, no, like, I'm not going. You see this COVID is still running rampant. Psych. So speaking of the brat, we saw a little section with her and Big Booty Judy. Y'all know that's her girl, Big Booty Judy. Um, she finally, you know, we're going to say came out the closet. Oh, the brat finally came out the closet. I'm sorry, the brat. <laughs> but, uh, bitch, we knew. Like, since you've been out since my song Funkified, like, the brat, who was you fooling? I mean, she is the prettiest dyke that I know. Like, it's weird. Not too many females have mastered the the stud femininity like place the only people i know are the brat missy elliott and queen latifah you can't tell me nothing about them three bitches like they still stud in a weird way what do they call them they're stud and there's fem and there's stem i guess that's them but the brat has managed to wear timbaland boots dark jeans a hoodie and still got a full face beat. Like, it still look good. Like, it's so crazy. But she's with the girl. She's finally opening everybody up to her life. It was cute watching the brat be all up in love and stuff like that. And they were talking about, obviously, what they're doing during quarantine. What was happening with Black Lives Matter. And she's just, like, hoping, like, obviously, like, everybody else has been, like, these protests weren't for anything. You know, they obviously, hopefully, they'll get some things moving. Um, But... Now they're trying to figure out what they're going to do with uh, Judy's, like, warehouse or something like that. And the brat got all these damn dogs. Like, the brat got, like, 600 dogs running around the house. That took me by surprise, too. But it was cute watching the brat. Like, I really appreciate the fact that she's finally letting people into her life a little bit more. Because I really am a, a, a brat fan. So to see that was, like, super dope. Um... So what happened after that? Ayana calls her dad. He was in the studio with a girl. The girl actually sounded pretty good. I wonder if that she's going to get some like actual like camera time. I don't know if that was a girl that's going to be a cast member. But from what I heard, like she definitely did sound different. She definitely had like a little bit of flow about her. Um, but he gets a call from Ayana. She lets him know that she, that she got the co. Um, she got the, the 19, um, the vid, whatever you want to call it, the Rona. She caught it. And he said, you went to Florida and that's where you got it. She's like, yep. And it's like, he told you. What's that girl said? I told y'all niggas. I told you. <laughs> like that meme. Girl, y'all was supposed to listen to everybody. Stay your ass at home. Yeah, it's, it, it sucked to be inside all day. But guess what also sucks? Dying. Not being able to breathe. Your lungs collapsing. That's what also sucks. So, you know, which, which, which way you want to go with that? Okay, Ayana. But obviously as a father, when you hear your child is has asthma, gets COVID, and is sick as a dog, and then she develops pneumonia, like that type of panic, I obviously couldn't imagine how that feels as a dad to watch that. So 
Um, and that's what a lot of people had to watch. Like their family members just like suffer and not be able to do anything about it. So he's, you know, obviously her and she's trying to figure out, I guess, with Amy because Amy and her live together. So did she get catch COVID too? Like they're trying to get that all tested out. But at the moment, like that was just obviously really rough for them. Um, and she's hopefully going to get over it. So last but not least, we get to this final scene with, um, Bow Wow. I think that pretty much everything that happened in this episode. Yeah. So Bow Wow, um, was spending too much in Miami. So he has his manager, Andy, that basically controls, not controls, but it's his, his advisor, his road manager, like handles the money, handles everything. And they go sit down. Bow Wow does his usual flirting with the girl at the bar, talking about, oh, what's your name? She's talking about Roman, like the Bible. You know, clearly she been, <laughs> clearly that's her line when every nigga comes to, oh, what's your name? Roman, like the Bible. Or no, Rome. I think it was Rome. Some Roman or Rome, one of them. But he was like, oh, okay. And she, and uh, she's like, oh, that's a shot. So he's talking to him, obviously, about his wild nights in Miami. And Bow Wow's like, man, I work so hard. I go overseas. I'm filming. I'm in the cold. I feel like I deserve a break. And he's like, cool. Yeah, you know, wild out. Get your fun and everything. But you might want to consider the fact that it's a pandemic. And you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars when money isn't circulating. And then he buys like a $100,000 car. He's like, oh, did you buy it? He's like, yep. He's like, first of all, why the fuck would you do that anyways? When he literally just sat there and said... Like, the fact that Andy sat there was like, but you got a driver. Like, you have a driver in another car. So why are you buying another car for $100,000 when you don't even drive? <laughs> I swear. Bow Wow, he was trying so hard. Like, he he want to be it so bad. Like, I think a Mean Girls were like, everybody be vying to be friends with Regina George. And I feel like Bow Wow wants to be let in the in crowd so bad. But... <laughs> Chris Brown, like Chris Brown said, how you gonna hate from outside of the club? You can't even get in. <laughs> so, well, I feel so bad for him sometimes. I feel like him and Safari, you know, like the same cornball level, like him and Safari are kind of there together. Because we all will never forget the time that he thought he was getting ready to front like he was on a private plane and got caught. Man, that shit took me out. He said, oh, living the life, like he's gonna post a private plane. And somebody said, um... I just went to Bow Wow's social media. He talking about, oh, living the, the high life, posting a private plane. But ain't this him, this him sitting here in front of me in this coach class? Lies, you tell Bow Wow. Lies, fairy tales, and fallacies. So, yeah, Andy gets with him and talks to him about um, what he's trying to do next. He's like, look, we need to figure out something. You spend it all this money, but in Bow Wow's confessional, he's like, oh, you know, when you work hard, you know, the money's just going to come back. So, yeah, I was out there spending money. But with this album, he basically felt like I can spend it because with this album, it's going to come back because he feels like because it's his final hoorah and everything that people are going to buy it. And it's like, Bow Wow, just because you're saying this is my last album doesn't mean people are going to buy it. Like, people really don't fuck with you like that. And honestly, your music has become garbage because you're trying so hard to be like these hood dudes and like keep up with them. Like, it's not it. Because that last song you released was shit. I'm sorry. It was. Um, Andy uh, asked him how he felt about the album. He's like, man, I'm so excited. Like, yeah, you know, this the one, this the one. He's like, dang, you got to make me feel bad. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, go back to the drawing board. He's like, what do you mean go back to the drawing board? He was like, it's not it, bro. You sitting here talking about your life, but you skipped three, four, five years. Bow Wow kept putting out there that this album was basically him discussing all his relationships, all the shit he went through you know, friendships and everything. So I think even one of the songs like involved Angela, like I guess he was kind of going to do like each single was like a different woman type thing. I think that's how he explained it or a different story. And the dude's like, if you're going to go all out there, then go all out there. Don't half-ass it, which I agree. Is it going to piss some people off? Yeah. Are you going to be revealing some stories? Yeah. But if it's your life, like that's what happened. Like you have the right to tell. But... Bow Wow can't write, he can't rap, like, and he wouldn't be like, oh, can't nobody tell my life but me, you know, can't nobody, you know, put it down on paper, like, this is what happened to me, I can be the one to tell it, but you can get writers, a lot of people, like, you might not be able to write your own shit, but, like, it, it's your story, so that's what you want to get out there and do it in the right way, so he's like, man, 
everybody loved it. Everybody was on the boat talking about man about all that's the shit. He told me everybody loved it. The bitches love it. The bartender, he look at her, he's like, the bartender, you love it. And he's like, nigga, cause you paid for it. And the pause, like, did y'all see the pause like that bow all had? When he said they only liked it cause you paid for it. He said, I ain't doing this with you, Andy. He his feelings was hurt. Honestly, it's the truth. People was only vibing and bumping your music because you paid for it. You put them on a jet. You put them on a yacht. You played your music. And first of all, everybody was high and drunk anyway. So the shit was going to sound good to them regardless. Because y'all are in a partying mood. So whatever music you put on, I'm sure it was to fit the occasion. But these aren't music people. These aren't executives. These aren't producers. These aren't people who have a musical ear. They only liked it because you had them partying, busting it open. You talking about, oh, all the bitches was twerking to it. They loved it. They loved the music. They loved it because you was Bow Wow and they were trying to get put on. Obviously, you fucked one of them because you got a baby by some girl and his name is Stone that you just came out with the other day on Instagram. So, I need you to, like, I can already tell that that shit was going to be trash. Like, when he first started, like, I knew it was going to be garbage. First of all, because you're only working with pimping. And as the dude said, you need to get a real producer. He's like, what do you mean a real producer? He's like, you think uh, Pimpin ain't a producer? He's like, I mean, and it's like, bow wow. You, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting a different result. You may love Pimpin. He might be a good friend. He, he might may even make good beats, but let that be where it lies. Like find somebody who truly can produce has an ear for the music and can get a sense of where you're trying to go with it. So he's like, why don't you ask your dad? Obviously talking about JD. And he like, no, not doing it. Can somebody remind me what happened with him and JD? Was it about a tour or something like that? Or he got on to him about the Alexis Scott situation. I think that's what it was. I think JD was trying to check him on the Alexis Scott situation. And of course, Bow I didn't listen. You see where that got him. Scratch the fuck up. Like, we saw that mugshot. <laughs> Alexis went half on that ass. Um, but he doesn't want to take it to JD. I'm like, first of all, why? He is a, even though he's small and look like a toe, he obviously know what he's doing when it comes to music. But I think Bow Wow doesn't want to hear that his shit is bad. I think he just wants a whole bunch of yes men around him. Um, and if you take it to JD and he tells you it sounds bad or whatever, like he's not going to want to change it because then he feels like JD, I guess is the one handling it because he's like, Oh, it's my story. Can't nobody tell it like me. And it's like, okay, go ahead and tell your story the way you want to do it. Then who going to listen? Not me. Not a lot of people about all you are surely mistaken. If you think people are just going to buy your album and listen to it because you say, Oh, it's my final album. Sorry, buddy. Don't work that way. Um, but you have so many connections. Take the shit to Snoop Dogg then. If you don't want to let JD look at it, let Snoop Dogg look at it. Hell, but obviously what you're doing right now is not working, Bow Wow. And of course, he got an attitude. He felt some type of way of what, of what Andy told him. But the shit was the truth. It was the truth. I don't even have to listen to music and I already knew it was trash. He's my, oh, we working hard. Okay, Bow Wow, whatever. So he gets mad, throws his drink, and walks out, and then that's the end of the episode. So it's like, oh, little baby had a fit. Somebody go get his pacifier. Oh, so sad. Bow Wow just, he's he, cornball. But yeah, this is kind of the first episode of Growing Up Hip Hop. Clearly things are getting a lot more tense when everybody else finds out that Deb Atme, Antme, whatever her name is, supports Trump. Woo! That's going to be something else. Um... Tell me how you feel about what the season's gonna be like. Are y'all excited? The brat uh, let her let everybody else into her life about Miss Bo Big Booty Judy. Um, and Johnny Blades. Are y'all excited to see Johnny Blades come back this season? She was in the trailer, but how do y'all feel about her, you know, coming back and being a part of the crew? Um, I appreciate you for tuning in. Make sure you guys go check out the episode of Daily Squeeze I posted because we're talking about. All the shit that happened at the Capitol, white folks and everything, etc., etc. That's wrong with this country. Uh, make sure y'all go check that out. Make sure y'all follow my social medias, my Twitter, my Instagram. I'm definitely going to be interacting a lot more on those. And drop down in the comments of other reviewers because I'm looking to do some collabs this year. Um, and definitely want to start doing like lives and panels um, so I can get, 
you know, obviously, clearly, you know, more exposure and stuff like that. So make sure you guys are tagging, sharing, everything to get your girl, you know, popping for the year 2021. Okay? Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel. I will catch all you hoes later. Deuces.